So welcome everyone uh, today's, to today's webinar. My name is Sean Roach and I work in the Admissions and Recruitment Office at Algonquin College here in Pembroke. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the Community and Social Services programs that we offer here at Algonquin College in Pembroke, where we are transforming hopes and dreams into lifelong success. Now, if anyone doesn't have any questions at any point during today's webinar, you can submit your questions through the question and chat uh, options through the webinar interface, and I will be able to uh, look at and, and answer those questions at the end of the webinar. So the first program I'm going to talk about today is our Early Ch Childhood Education Program. So the Early Childhood Education Program is a regular two-year Ontario College Diploma Program uh, condensed from four terms into three terms, which are then delivered over a course of a 12-month period. So these students will start in September and they'll study all the way through summer and finish partway through August of the following year. So some quick facts about the Early Childhood Education Program is the admission requirements required to get in. Um, you do need the grade 12 college level English with a mark of 65% or higher. Now, there is a focus on project-based learning within the early, early Childhood Education Program, where students will plan activities for young children that will help to, to develop their intellectual skills and behaviors as they learn their first lessons in life. Some of the projects may focus on many things, including developing curriculum for learning activities, making safe and age-appropriate toys, drawing up daycare floor plans to ensure the environment is safe for children, creating projects to teach healthy eating, and the importance of nutrition for young children, and much more. Now, you will also get to participate in three field placements throughout the course of the program, focusing on children from birth age to the age of 12. Uh, now, there is one field placement per term, and while most placements do take place within Renf sorry, within Renfrew County, um, there are opportunities to have your placements outside of Renfrew County as well. You also have the opportunity to polish your skills in the Creativity Lab, to facilitate creative experiences for preschool children in a lab environment that promotes their active engagement. A focus will be on how to organize and implement a learning environment in a way that nurtures and fosters creativity in children. These experiences are beneficial twofold. They provide students with first-hand knowledge through demonstration and observation and provide free creative play sessions for children. You'll also get to create, implement, and assess play-based curricula. And upon graduation, you will also get to register with the College of Early Childhood Educators uh, to be able to practice as an early child educator in the province of Ontario. And the average starting salary for an early child, childhood educator is about $36,000 a year. And upon graduation, if you don't want to enter the workforce right away, you do have the opportunity to further your studies at university to continue your pathway to become a teacher. So some of the courses that you're going to be taking within the Early Childhood Education Program uh, will include the music and movement experiences for children in the first term. So by exposing children to a variety of musical and movement experiences, it is essential to children's learning and development. You will explore pedagogical value of music and movement in early learning environments and actively participate in music and movement experiences that can be incorporated into a variety of early learning settings. You'll also get to take the Creative Art Experiences for Children course as well, because educators must have an understanding of children's artistic development in order to plan and implement appropriate play-based creative experiences. You will explore and assess developmentally appropriate materials for activities for infants, toddlers, preschoolers, and school-aged children. You will also examine methods to foster children's creativity and learning. And then moving into the second term of the program, you will get to explore the psychology of learning as well by examining, examining a variety of theories from both historical and current perspectives. You will develop an understanding of how an individual's learning is influenced by developmental, psychological and social elements. You will use real life situations to identify how these theories can be used to support learning and develop within, within continuously changing environments. And on the curriculum side of it, side of things as well, you'll get to explore how to create an effective curriculum. Uh, so it is, it is expected that educators plan, implement, and evaluate play-based curriculum. Students develop the skills necessary to implement the curriculum cycle as a framework for creating programs that facilitate play-based learning. In addition, you will examine a variety of curriculum approaches with respect to both the curriculum cycle and the guiding principles for best practice in early learning programs. You will also apply established quality assurance measures to examine strategies for enhancing best practices within traditional, traditional curriculum. 
And then moving into the third term of the program, you will also get to explore a course uh, for math and sciences experiences for children. So by building on a children's natural interest, you will examine how to support children's math and science skills in early learning environments. You will also explore the importance of connecting children to nature through active exploration. You will also actively discover ways to engage children in math and science. And you'll also learn about the assessment of learning because the ability to assess how children are learning and the quality of the curriculum and educational environment provided for young children are essential to an educator's role. Through the use of a variety of data collection tools, as well as your knowledge of child and curriculum development, you will enhance your ability to make assessments of children's learning, development and interests necessary for creating appropriate curriculum. And uh, some career and pathway options you can take out of the early childhood education program would be to find work as educators in er early learning and care programs for infants, toddler, preschool, and school age children. You can work with, uh, within programs run by community health agencies, work with home child care providers, or as a home child care provider, um, work within nursery schools, full day kindergartens, or resource in Ontario early year centers. And there are new opportunities emergency, emerging in the entrepreneurial market in the areas of marketing, educational toys, books, and materials for consulting purposes. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about our general arts and science program. So this is an eight-month Ontario College Certificate Program, which uh, is delivered in uh, just a one-year format. So the students will start in September, and they'll be done their uh, certificate at the end of April. So the admission requirements re required to get accepted into the General Arts and Science Program is a grade 12 college-level English. And through the program, you will get the opportunity to begin your studies and build up your ac academic level of knowledge, as well as maybe obtain some admission requirements for another college program, all while experiencing a college environment and exploring your options. You'll also get to work on developing and exploring interpersonal communication, critical thinking and research skills, all while uh, working on improving any study habits and time management skills as well. And most of the courses that you will take within the General Arts and Science program may be eligible for a credit transfer to another college program in Ontario to lessen your course load uh, when you do make that transfer. And by taking the one-year General Arts and Science program, you can discover your future pathways and find your potential. One way that we have chosen you for, to discover those future pathways is by offering three focus stream options in the General Arts and Science program. Uh, the three focus streams we do offer is business, community and social services, and general education. So I'm going to talk about the business focus uh, to start off. So if you are interested in potentially going into a business-related program, but maybe you don't have the math requirements to enter into that program, you can pick up the math requirements and some other courses to apply as course exemptions going forward uh, through this one-year program. So we do have the mathematics in your level one, as well as accounting one and uh, exploring global business in your first level as well. And then moving into the second level of the program, you have courses such as marketing and economics, as well as communication skills for business. Uh, so there are many courses within those uh, two levels there that you are able to move forward to a business program to lessen your load in that uh, particular business program. Now, maybe you are looking at community and social services programs. And again, maybe you don't have the admission requirements to get into that program, or maybe you're just uh, using this as an exploration tool as well. So we have built in some uh, courses into this particular stream um, to guide you in that community and social services field. Courses such as the Introduction to Community Engagement and Introduction to Psychology, as well as Interpersonal Skills, Group Dynamics and Conflict Management, as well as the Applied Community Engagement course in the second term. Now we also have a general education focus as well, which is designed for anyone that it isn't sure which avenue they want to take uh, out of this one year program, uh, but through the courses that are built into the into this one year are applicable to basically all college programs at the college. So again, we do have a mathematics course as well as a communications one course. The communication one is a general communication course that is offered uh, across all college programs. So you would potentially be able to use that as an exemption. Um, we also have introduction to community engagement and as well as two general education elective choices as well, and two general education elective choices within each term as well to broaden your, uh, your, broaden your choices too. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about our Police Foundations program now. 
So the Police Foundations program, much like the Early Child Education program, is a regular two-year diploma program condensed from four terms into three terms, which is then delivered over a 12-month format. So again, these students are starting in September and they're studying all the way through summer and finishing partway through August of the following year. So the admission requirements required to get into the Police Foundations program is a grade 12 college level English. Through the program, you will get to learn, learn hands-on and learning in our labs and scenario rooms, as well as prepare for the police force fitness tests with on-site gymnasium and fitness facilities. On occasion, through a partnership with Garrison Petawawa, you will also have access to Dundonald Hall, which features an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Uh, and there are community volunteer opportunities available for our students through partnerships with organizations such as the local United Way and the Pembroke Junior A Lumber Kings hockey team. Those volunteer opportunities are provided to the students to hone their pre-policing skills outside of the classroom. The Police Foundation students will also get to collaborate with other programs during an interprofessional mock critical incident training exercise. Uh, and through this mock critical incident training exercise, we do invite members of the local OPP detachment uh, to participate and help guide the, uh, the policing students as well. So the police foundation students will get to observe exactly what a police officer's role would be in that type of exercise and that type of scenario and how they may collaborate with uh, some of the other professions that are on hand as well. Our Police Foundation students also get to complete the Ontario Ministry of Community Safety and Correctional Services approved security, security guard course as well. Uh, so the students get to get their uh, career started in law enforcement uh, directly within the program and are able to start uh, taking security guard jobs uh, either while they're still in the program or directly after they've done the program as well. So exploring some of the courses that you're going to be taking within the Police Foundations program, you will get to explore the Canadian criminal justice system. So you are provi provided with an overview of the Canadian criminal justice system with a particular emphasis on the history, function, role, and organization of Canadian law enforcement services. Through case study analysis, group discussions, and other experiential learning opportunities, you will explore the three components of the Canadian criminal justice system. You will also explore a course in ethics and professionalism, uh, where you will study ethical theories and clarify your values as a means of establishing a framework for ethical decision making. You will apply ethical decision making models to deal with dilemmas in your professional and personal lives. Through case studies, group discussions and other experiential learning opportunities, you will practice using tools and exa examine a variety of professional ethical codes. And then moving into the second level of the program, you will explore criminology as well. So criminology seeks to understand the underpinnings of criminal and deviant behavior. You will examine this behavior through sociological, biological, and psychological per perspectives, as well as apply this knowledge in critical examination of Canadian and global crimes and statistics. You will also take a contemporary look at victimology and restorative justice. And interviewing and investigations is a really big part of being a police officer. Um, so through the interviewing and investigations course, the focus will be on interviewing and investigation skills, where you will develop the interviewing skills necessary to retrieve information from victims, witnesses, and suspects. You will also learn the basic steps of investigation, including the practical development of note-taking and observation skills. And in the third level of the program, you will also explore the criminal code and federal statutes. So you will analyze specific elements of selected criminal code offenses, you will research case law and assess its impact on criminal offenses and use case law to argue or defend decisions. You will also analyze elements of offenses related to weapons and the Firearms Act, Controlled Drugs and Substances, and the Controlled Drugs and Substances Act. Provisions of other federal statutes and the relationship with the criminal code are also examined. You will also ex get to explore uh, what police powers are. Uh, so through pertinent sections of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms and their impact on Canadian criminal procedures are examined. Uh, citizen and police arrest and release authorities, police powers of search and seizure, with and without a warrant, and police discretion and its impl implications are discussed. This course will enable you to become familiar with police terminology and apply the procedures required to effectively arrest and release. This course will also look at police governance and accountability issues related to the Police Services Act, police complaints, First Nations policing, and management and labor issues. The use of force theory, law, and other legal issues related to the use of force are also discussed, as well as the theory related to officer safety.
and your career and pathway options out of the police foundations program would be to find work with different municipal, regional, or police, provincial police services, so long as you co successfully complete their requirements set out by those individual law enforcement agencies. You can also explore work with other related law enforcement agencies, or if you want to further your studies, there are opportunities to articulate into various bachelor degree programs, such as the Bachelor of Public Safety at Algonquin College in Ottawa, or the Bachelor of Arts and Justice Studies at Royal Roads University. And the last program I'm going to talk about today is our social service worker program. So this is a two year Ontario college diploma program delivered in the regular format. So the students will have their first year from September until April and they'll return for their second year again in uh, September to April. So the admission requirements to get into the social service worker program is a grade 12 college level English with a mark of 65% or higher. The students in our so social service worker program have the opportunity to complete three field placements uh, throughout the program, totaling over 500 hours. You'll also get to participate in various applied research and direct practice opportunities, such as uh, promoting the White Ribbon Campaign. So the White Ribbon Campaign is uh, within the social service worker program. Uh, so male students within the program have promoted this white ribbon campaign, a movement of men and boys who bring awareness about ending violence against women and girls. The movement, movement also promotes gender equality, healthy relationships, and a new vision of masculinity. Uh, students will also learn through theoretical classes, role playing and seminar discussions, as well as they get to participate in the collaboration with other programs during the interprofessional mock critical incident training exercise. So the scenario goals of the social service worker students in that mock critical incident training exercise will be to develop and maintain professional relationships which adhere to professional, legal, and ethical standards aligned to social service work. You will advocate for appropriate access to resources to assist in individual families and communities, develop and maintain positive working relationships with colleagues, supervisors, and community partners, use a variety of thinking skills to anticipate and solve problems, show respect for diverse opinions, values, belief systems, and contribution of others, as well as interacting with others in groups or teams in ways that contribute to effective working relationships and the achievement of goals. And students can also use credits obtained within the social service worker program to articulate into a university degree program to further your studies as well. So some of the courses that you're going to be taking within the social service worker program will be exploring areas such as addictions. So the clients of social service workers frequently experience challenges in the areas of addictions. You will gain basic knowledge regarding substance abuse and addiction recovery. You will explore your values and attitudes about the use and abuse of drugs and alcohol. You will gain insight, awareness, and the understanding necessary to interact positively with addicted clients and their families. You will also get to explore the social welfare in Canada as well. So by studying the historical progress of the social welfare system in Canada, you will explore the fundamentals of inequity, poverty, homelessness, violence, oppression, and discrimination, uh, which are introduced in both historical and current social policies. You will examine your own values and practices to develop your knowledge and to critically analyze current social welfare policies and practices. And moving into the second level of the program, you will get to take a course in crisis intervention because one's ability to function in a professional manner in crisis situations is essential in the field of social service work. You will differentiate long-term counseling from crisis intervention and examine crisis-related assessment techniques and intervention strategies to de-escalate and support those in crisis. You will explore the concept of professional burnout as it relates to crisis. You will practice non-violent crisis intervention techniques and qualify for an additional certification upon successful completion of the course. And you will also get to explore community development as well because community development emphasizes the worth of self-help, mutual support, and the building up of community integration and developing the capacity for problem solving, self-representation, and promotion of collective action to bring a community's preferences to the attention of political decision makers. The theory and practice of community work are related to contemporary social action movements of local and national organizations. You will develop a basic understanding of community organization while undertaking a project such as the White Ribbon Campaign. 
And moving into the second year of the program, uh, the social service worker students do spend uh, a lot more time in their placements uh, with their placement agencies. So they're actually not on campus as often as they would have been in the first year. Uh, but the time that they do spend on campus are taking courses such as working with families. So understanding family systems is essential to providing optimum support to families. You are grounded in family systems theory and explore patterns of interaction in terms of the wide range of problems that families and partners bring to social agencies. An emphasis is placed on how the family has changed over the generations and various intervention options. You will utilize genograms, timelines, and ecomaps to assess family functioning. You'll also get to explore the mental health aspect uh, as well, because mental health is an increasing concern in Canada today and impacts all areas of social service work. So through the mental health course, you will explore a variety of mental health challenges faced by adults and the current trends in services, treatments, legislation, policies, and medications. Attitudes, biases, and barriers affecting persons with mental illness will be examined in relation to the role of social service workers. And in the last semester of your program, uh, assessment and intervention uh, are core skills for the qualified social service workers and fundamental learning requirements for practice in the field. So through the assessment planning and practice in so social service work, uh, you will develop strong assessment skills that are required to develop an accurate understanding of clients and their needs to identify problems and to serve as a basis for evaluating the effectiveness of helping interventions. You will develop skills related to data collection, data interpretation, problem identification, and intervention. You will also learn to assess common issues experienced in the field, as well as develop comprehensive and effective intervention plans. And you will explore glo globalization and social welfare as well, because globalization has radically altered the economic, social, and environmental landscape in which human needs are met. You will examine global commodities such as food, water, oil and mining extraction, as they influence global poverty and health conditions. Environmental, economic, and social sustainability are guiding principles as students develop critical thinking skills through group discussions, research projects, interactive lectures, and other activities. And potential career and pathway options out of the social service worker program will be to find work with municipal levels, provincial levels, or private operations, uh, in different so social service agencies. Um, you can also work within social service departments, long-term care facilities, addictions and mental health services, schools and programs for youth, uh, different community health centers, shelters, or residential treatment programs. But no matter where you might find yourself working, you are most likely going to find yourself supporting vulnerable people who are impacted by issues such as loss and separation, family crisis, poverty, violence, homelessness, addiction, disability, unemployment, gender identity, immigration, or culture. Okay, so just uh, to talk about the waterfront campus in Pembroke really quickly. Uh, so our average class size does range from about 25 to 50 students. Uh, and more specific to the uh, four programs that I talked about today, I would say that average class size uh, goes to maybe 25 to 35 students. Um, but no matter what program you are exploring or uh, potentially looking into, uh, it does offer lots of great one-on-one -on -one instruction inside and outside of the classroom for you to uh, get help on any areas that you may be stuck on. We also have access to five privately owned residences within walking distance of the campus as well. Uh, so that offers up lots of opportunities for any out of town students or even any local students that want to maybe uh, get out of the house and live on their own and live close to campus and uh, don't have to worry about um, the transportation issue of getting to class every day. And through some of the uh, slides that I've uh, gone through, you've found out about some of the different hands-on learning, community partnerships, and work integrated learning opportunities that are offered through some of our programs. Uh, so we do like to build those initiatives into all of our programs to all offer all of our students uh, those real world uh, type of experiences uh, while they're on campus. Some more, some more quick facts about the campus as well. So I've talked about how small, warm, and friendly we are with a great student to professor ratio. We are very committed to student success as well because we want to make sure that every student that comes to us uh, graduates as an Algonquin grad walking across the stage at the end of their journey. Uh, and we are, we are very connected to our local labor market in Lanark and Renfrew counties as well. So we can pick up on any new trends that may be happening in a certain uh, industry and try to build any of the, that new information into our curriculum uh, to get our students the most up-to-date information to make them career ready whenever they are finished with us um, upon graduation. We do also 
offer over $250,000 in bursaries distribu distributed annually to just our students in Pembroke. And we do have about 1,000 students that annually attend our campus. So that does create a really great opportunity for you if you apply for those bursaries uh, to be able to get a good chunk of money to apply to your studies or um, to, towards your housing or food, anything like that. And about 50% of our students do come from outside of the Murphy County area. Um, so having about half of our student population uh, being from the local areas, it does create that nice little community feeling for those out-of-town students uh, coming to a smaller rural type campus uh, if they've uh, coming from a bigger city. So it just makes it a well more community feeling on campus. And I'll mention uh, some of our great student support services as well that we offer. Uh, so we do have a financial aid team. Uh, so if anyone's looking for help on filling out uh, financial aid applications or if they're lo looking for help or information on different bursaries or scholarships that may be available, they are able to connect with our financial aid team and uh, get put on the right path to success there. We also have a Center for Accessible Learning Department as well. So if anyone has a learning disability, if they have an acquired brain injury, if they fall under the ADHD autism spectrum disorder, they can register with the Center for Accessible Learning to gain accommodations to their learning environment. And maybe if they require extra time to write tests or a quiet room to write their tests in. Uh, we also have access to peer tutoring available through the Center for Accessible Learning as well, uh, which is available to all students on campus. And we also have access to student success specialists, counseling services, health services, uh, co-op support, as well as employment support uh, to help uh, students in developing any cover letters, resumes, or to help with interview assistance as well. And we also uh, offer free academic coaching through our library too. Now, we aren't just focused totally on the academic side of things. We do like to promote a healthy work-life balance uh, through some of our student experiences. So we do have orientation activities during the first week of school, which culminates with our fall games day that we have at the end of the first week of school in which we excuse all first-year students out of the classes and um, we set up lots of fun games outside, outside of the college, encourage everyone to meet their new classmates and new college colleagues, as well as meet their new faculty and staff members as well. And on that uh, note of uh, theme days, we do encourage everyone to dress up for things such as Halloween uh, to create that nice little commodity on campus. And uh, through the Halloween costume contest uh, that we have uh, through the Commons, we let the everyone in the Commons vote on who has the best costume. We do, do also like to have different opportunities for student staff sporting events, such as the student staff softball game or the student staff hockey games uh, during our winter carnival. And one of our mental health initiatives that we do have on campus as well is the AC Dog Squad and St. John Therapy uh, Dog Program as well. So the AC Dog Squad are dogs owned by college staff and faculty in which they have been trained uh, with an actual actual trainer um, and they did get they did receive a certification so they come on campus once uh, once a week with the dogs and set down in uh, high traffic areas of the campus so as students come in and you know if they're just having a, a bad day if they're maybe missing their uh, their pet from home they can sit down with the AC dog squad uh, for a few minutes and uh, de-stress a little bit or with the St. John therapy dogs uh, we bring them in for exam weeks set them down in the commons area during high traffic time so as you come in to write your exams or after you're done writing your exams you can spend a little bit of time with the dog and celebrate your exam or forget what happened in the exam room okay so that uh, concludes today's webinar uh, if you do have any questions um, around any of the programs that were covered today, any admission types questions, you can send an email to Alana Shapu. She is the client service officer for those programs. Her email address is displayed on the screen here. Uh, but if anyone does have any program specific questions that they would like answered, I have put up the contact information for each of the program coordinators. So Noelle Party, she is the early childhood education program coordinator. Sean Pentecost is the journal arts and science program coordinator. Dan LaBelle is the Police Foundation's Program Coordinator, and Rhonda Mullen is the Social Service Worker Program Coordinator. Uh, so their emails are displayed on the screen here. So if you do have any program-specific questions, I encourage you to reach out to them and uh, they'll be able to answer your questions. Um, otherwise, I will stick around for a little bit uh, after I sign off here to answer any questions that uh, you may have through the question and chat uh, options as well. So I do thank you for attending today's webinar and I hope to see you, to see you on campus sometime in the near future.